Hey guys, Reef here from Evolve and Play with another coronavirus update. I wanted to share where my thoughts are now. Um, they've changed quite a bit recently. So I've been worried about this, you know, a lot earlier than many people, but I still in many ways have been naive about what's coming and how we need to respond to it. And I want to correct some of that now. Um, basically, I think that if you are a movement teacher, if you own a movement facility, if you own a gym, you need to shut it down right now. Um, and if you, it, it, and if you don't, that will potentially cost people many lives. Um, you know, I said in one of my first videos, you know, we have a really strong incentive to to ignore what's going on because it costs us money. Um, in the long run, not responding and panicking early is going to cost us a lot more money. And I'm going to break down for you guys why I think that's the case and why we not only need to be shutting down our gyms, but we need to be uh, proactively campaigning to get people to um, to shut things down um, on a much wider scale if we want our businesses to be able to survive at all. So what we need to look at is that basically there is a, there's a, a, a exponential curve to this and now we know what that exponential curve looks like in China we know what it looks like in Italy we know what it looks like in Iran and we can see that the United States is tracking along the exact same exponential curve as is happening in the UK as is happening in Germany as is happening in Spain right we can project what this is going to look like and it looks very very bad um, and the way that people are thinking about trying to solve this is not at all reasonable so right now, uh, so let's, let's, let's rewind for a second. Um, or let me give you the situation as it stands. Right now in Washington state, as of yesterday, uh, there had been 40 deaths out of the 47 deaths in this country due to coronavirus. So there's 47 deaths in the country at large, 40 of them are right here in King and Snohomish County. So we are the epicenter of this as say Lombardy was in Italy and Wuhan was in China. Um, if you go back to uh, March 1st, right? So that's 15 days ago. 15 days ago, there were 34 deaths in Italy, okay? So let's say that's quite similar. Quite similar number of infections, quite similar number of deaths. We might have more infections and fewer deaths because we have a younger population. But nonetheless, it's 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 project it's moving in the same direction. March sixth, that number was 124. Uh, or, yeah, um, and essentially at that point they had quarantined everybody in Lombardy and would uh, quarantine the whole country very soon. Um, and the hospitals were completely slammed and utterly destroyed. Right, there were no. Um, you know, people are talking about not being able to get chemo treatments, not going to be able to physical therapy, you know, heart patients are being delayed because everything is being devoted to dealing with COVID patients, right? That's what's, that's what's coming for us. So, okay. That was March 6th. As of today, the most recent update is that 1,809 people have died in Italy. So in two weeks and 15 days, we've gone from 34 to 1800. It, if Italy continues on trend, it will surpass China as the deadliest country for, uh, for coronavirus in two to three days. Um, we are on the same trajectory. We are approximately two weeks behind them. Um, and we are probably further behind them when it comes to testing. Right now, the United States has less testing per capita than every other industrialized, you know, first world nation. So, Testing is incredibly important because it's how you identify clusters and this thing moves in clusters, right? Uh, so if you, if you don't have aggressive tracking of those clusters, um, you can't control community uh, um, transmission and it's just gonna keep growing. So now what a lot of people have been advocating for is this idea of flattening the curve. And in my last video, I addressed why this is not a good idea, but I wanna to, to dig deeper into that. Okay, so the idea with flat, you know, I've seen even new data that, that shows that this is, is, is a much more dangerous idea than we think. So um, if we try to flatten the curve, what we're going to be, you know, looking at 
is essentially how do we, what is the capacity of our system? And then what is the capacity of the virus to infect people? And how do we get the virus underneath that capacity? So I, I will link an article that breaks down these numbers, but I can give the basics to you. Um, there's essentially, uh, if, we, if we project out based on an R naught of 2.2 um, and this, you know, a susceptible population of you know, almost 70% of us could get this, uh, then what we would see is that between now and December, we can expect an average of about, a three, about 3 million people to need um, ICU care per day. Um, but we only have a capacity of 100, um, 170,000 ICU beds. So we're vastly under that, right? We can expand capacity, but we can't expand capacity nearly fast enough to make up for, for what's coming from the pipe. If we wanted to, to get the virus below that threshold, and we were going to go for a herd immunity strategy where we went through the entire population eventually, that would actually take a decade, right? Um, now, the future is, is very hard to predict. You know, we might have a vaccine in that time. Um, the virus can mutate. There's any number of things. So it's not reasonable to think that something like this could play out over a decade. What it, what it really means is it's not sustainable right now, right? You, you can't really suppress this under the curve and keep it controlled. Um, and if you did, you, you would have a, a, a prolonged healthcare problem of extraordinary magnitude. Now, the, the problem gets even bigger than this. Um, coronaviruses, we get, we get coronaviruses all the time, right? 30% of, uh, of the common colds are variants of the coronavirus family, right? So this new novel coronavirus is, is much more deadly and much more lethal than those common colds, obviously. Now, what we know with the common cold, though, is that immunity that you get after infection is not very prolonged. So you get a cold this year, you can get the cold again next year. So if we, if we got everyone, you know, if we get a bunch of people through having this infection, we don't actually know that when we come out on the other side that they won't get it again next year and the year after that. If we allow this thing to become endemic, um, we have no idea what the costs are going to be long term and the the stresses it's going to put on our medical system on our bureau uh, bureaucratic systems on our civic systems it's unimaginable okay so that's the general message i'm not the biggest expert i can point you to people who are much much better experts what i'm thinking about this from is the perspective of movement right of movement teachers natural movement teachers parkour teachers martial artists etc so all of these people, I know many jujitsu gyms, many Muay Thai gyms, many parkour gyms are still open in this country. And they're, they're scared to close because they're gonna lose their revenue. Um, we have a deal that we're putting out to try to help people with that. You can reach out to us and, and, and find out about that. But my message here is that if you delay, you are increasing your losses. And the reason that is true is that it takes time to get this under containment and for every infection that we avoid now, that in, that that that's an exponential amount of more infections down the road, right? So, you know, if we avoid it today, you know, that's like five times as good as avoiding it a week from today or more, right? There may be thousands of infections a month down the road because of you know one infection today, or you know, um, I, I don't know have the exact numbers in front of me, but. Uh, but the point is, the more infections there are, the longer it takes to get containment. So currently in China, they've had this extraordinarily intense quarantine that's been going on for six, almost seven weeks. Um, so right now in Italy, there were 369 new cases yesterday. In China, there were 30 new cases. Okay, so China has achieved containment and they're driving this virus to extinction. There are actually more new cases. There were 88 cases in China that came from people coming into China, right? So you can drive this virus to extinction if you put in place the right policies. If you don't put in place the right policies, it's going to be, it's going to be a disaster, an absolute disaster. Um, and I'll, I'll maybe explain more about that after I explain this, but, but here's the, 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 the key number to understand. Okay. In six weeks, 
the Chinese have been able to get this almost to containment. Let's say it takes them another two weeks to drive that number of new infections down to functionally zero, right? That's the point when you can start thinking about, um, you know, when are we going to be able to liberalize and get out of these quarantines? Well, it's going to take another six weeks to get to be sure that everyone who currently has the virus has completely recovered from it, right? So if you're a, if you're a business right now and you, you quarantine today and everybody else quarantines today, then there's fewer, fewer people out there. Maybe we can get through this in three and a half months or four months, right? But China has 80,000 cases, right? If we allow that exponential curve to go up and we get to 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, that means that you have to, you have longer to stay in quarantine, right? Longer to, to be out of business. The faster we act, the more we panic early, the less, the less damaging this is to our system long term. So what I highly recommend to everybody in this industry is shut your classes down now. Shut your, um, your gym down now. And not only that, call your state representatives, call your senators, call, your, call the governor, you know, call whomever you can, call your mayor and say, shut down the restaurants, shut down everything that we can. There should, people should not be out in public right now um, because we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're going to be creating a larger and larger problem in the future if we allow things to continue. I know for many of you, this will sound alarmist. You know, you're not seeing this yet. It's very hard to believe in exponential functions and, and what, what's coming down the road because we're not feeling it yet, right? We're not seeing it yet. And we're not really designed to, 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 to think so far in the future. But I, I ask you to really look at the numbers and see what's going to play out and ask yourself, are you willing to try to get some money today, some money next week, and sacrifice months of operation potentially down the road and hundreds, maybe thousands of people's lives because you're not willing to shut your gym down. That's, that's what we need to do. We need to shut the gyms down. We need to, uh, I was advocating, you know, train with one partner, uh, martial arts. No, no martial arts. Um, I was advocating, you know, training in small groups outdoors. I don't think it's safe to train in, in, in groups. Um, you know, you need to reduce your connectivity as much as possible. Um, you know, you gotta take, take precautions, train with a couple people at most. Um, don't, don't be in large groups. You know, there's a, don't train in urban environments where there's high traffic. People are going to be coughing and you know, the, the, the virus survives for up to 75 hours on stainless steel. You know, I don't know how long it survives on concrete, but I'm imagining it's, it's long enough, right? That you're going to be exposed if you're out there training in the streets, training on concrete. Um, I'm training in places where I know nobody else's hands are going. That's, that's my solution. I do think you should get outside. Um, I think you should go and get sun. Um, I think you should, you know, call people, be socially active in as many ways as you can that don't involve face-to-face -face contact. But uh, there's, there's a very hard but quick way through this, or there's a disastrous and long way through it. And we need to make a decision right now what we're going to do. And uh, I'm for let's go through the pain right now to avoid much greater pain down the road. So that's my message today, guys. Um, I'll link all the stuff, you know, all the, all the material that I've been looking at. Um, and I hope, I hope the message reaches people. It's, this is not, this is not the flu. Um, the flu does not go from killing 40 people in three weeks to killing 360 people, um, in a day over the course of three weeks. And that's not, that's not how it works. Um, the flu can't, it won't infect up to 70% of the population. The flu doesn't have a case fatality rate close to 1% under good uh, conditions and over six or 7% under bad conditions uh, where these hospitals are overwhelmed. Uh, this is serious and we need to get serious about it and start researching and, and start um, preparing and, and not even preparing. We need to take action right now. 
that's my message today, guys. I'm sorry it's not more hopeful. Um, if you want some fun, go check out the vlog that I posted. Um, and uh, we'll talk again soon.